And here's your triple gooberberry sunrise, sir. <laughs> Yum! Oh, triple gooberberry sunrise, huh? Well, I guess I could use one of those. Now you're talking! Hey, waiter! We need another one over here. There you go. Ooh. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the hotly requested Triple Gooberberry Sunrise from SpongeBob SquarePants. This episode is sponsored by Audible, the leading provider of auditory entertainment and audiobooks. While we're all at home, Audible has tons of great content for us to enjoy. Go to audible.com slash babish or text babish to 500-500 to get access to one free audiobook and a monthly selection of Audible originals when you try Audible for 30 days. Now let's get down to the business of Megan Sundays. First up, we have to make a custard of starting with one cup of whole milk. And SpongeBob and Patrick look like they were in kind of an old-timey soda shop, so I'm gonna add 15 grams of non-diastatic malt powder, which I'm going to aggressively whisk using a full-size whisk because this stuff likes to clump. Once fully incorporated, I'm gonna add two cups of heavy cream. Then, just like any ice cream base, this stuff needs a sweetener. But I wanted to try to add at least one undersea ingredient, so I'm going to add 15 grams of carrageenan, a red seaweed extract that's commonly used as a thickener and that's gonna make for a smoother, more scoopable ice cream. This stuff also loves to clump, but if we tiny whisk it into our sugar, it's going to get dispersed more evenly and fully dissolve without putting up a fuss. Now the next step is to make sure that both everybody is dissolved and homogenous, and also bring our mixture up to the barest of simmers. We just want little bubbles forming around the outside of the pot. Stir frequently to make sure that the milk doesn't scorch, kill the heat once you start seeing the little bubbles, and then it's time to start tempering our eggs. More accurately, five large egg yolks that we're going to place in a heat-proof bowl and swaddle with a moistened towel that will allow us to whisk one-handedly as we slowly ladle in the hot milk and cream mixture. At first you want to add this in a very, very, very slow stream, but by the third or fourth ladle full, your eggs will be tempered and you can add it faster. All in all, we want to whisk about a third of the hot stuff into the cold stuff before adding the cold stuff back into the hot stuff. Makes sense? Good. Because now we're headed back to the stovetop, where, over medium-low heat, we're going to bring this mixture up to 185 degrees Fahrenheit, whisking pretty constantly to make sure that nobody's scrambling on the bottom of the pot, and you'll know it's done both when it reaches 185 degrees. Fahrenheit, and when it reaches a state that the French referred to as nup, which roughly translates to thick enough to coat the back of a spoon and to leave a trail when a finger is dragged across its surface. Actually, I think it literally translates to tablecloth, but whatever. Next up, during their Sunday consumption, SpongeBob and Patrick appeared to be getting inebriated. So this being from a cartoon, we're going to incorporate a little bit of this brown liquid from this bottle marked XXX. One can only imagine what this brown liquid could possibly be, but let's just say that it's uh, whiskey. So once killing the heat under our Custard, we're going to add about two ounces of XXX Mystery Brown Liquid, plus the sliced and scraped carcass of one vanilla bean. We're doing this while the custard is still hot so that the flavors can better steep. That being said, the faster we cool off our custard, the better. So we're placing a smaller bowl into a larger bowl filled with salted ice and water, and pouring the custard into the smaller bowl. Basically, the ice is going to cool things off, the salt is going to make the ice disperse its coldness faster, and the water is going to make sure that the coolness is evenly distributed. We're whisking occasionally for about 10 minutes until it reaches 72 degrees Fahrenheit, covering with plastic wrap and fridging for at least four hours or until fully chilled and ready to churn. Then we're churning via your churning method of choice, making sure to remember to remove that vanilla pod, trying desperately and failing to get our lid into place, come on, there we go, and churning for about 35 minutes or until we get a consistency similar to very firm soft serve. If you don't have an ice cream machine, go ahead and click the link in the upper right hand corner right now to see how to make ice cream by hand. However you churn it, it's now ready to head into the freezer, so we're going to scrape out as much of this delicious gunk as we possibly can into the freezer safe vessel of your choice. Optionally press some wax paper or plastic wrap directly down onto the surface to prevent freezer burn. Cover it up and freezer it for at least four hours, ideally overnight. Plenty of time to contend with the thing that I might be allergic to, so I'm wearing gloves. The festive bananas that we're going to have visibly jutting out of all different points of the sundae. So we're peeling them, slicing them in half, and repeatedly skewering them with toothpicks. This would obviously make them hazardous to eat at the speed at which SpongeBob and Patrick were eating them, but I'm positive that there's no other way that they're going to stay in place. I'm also going to pop these in the freezer for about an hour to increase their rigidity. Then, finally, it's time to assemble our triple gooberberry sunrise. We got ourselves an old school looking blue glass ice cream bowl, into which we are going to deposit three very large scoops of ice cream. And I gotta say, guys, this carrageenan stuff makes for very scoopable ice cream. This stuff spent over 12 hours in the freezer, and it's still super soft. Now I'm just going to place it back into the freezer for 15 to 20 minutes to make sure that there is no extraneous meltage during a Assembly. First up, our little ice cream buddy appears to have a hot fudge hairdo. So I'm just going to place a generous dollop of cooled fudge on top of the top scoop. Top that with the banana hat. 
and flank with our two banana arms. Then the face appeared to be made from green, blue, and red candies. So I've got green and blue M&Ms and one red peanut M&M, which we really gotta shove in there to make them stay in place, and then an inviting red licorice smile. Then I assume that the triple gooberberry refers to these three maraschino cherries delicately skewered on the end of each banana. And there you have it, the triple gooberberry, oh, hang on a second, fix the eye here, a fast disintegrating but mildly intoxicating ice cream sundae. Now to give it a try, I think the most upsetting thing to do would be to take a scoop out of this guy's face. Sorry, little friend. And I'll tell you right now, this is far and away the best homemade ice cream I've ever made. The texture is pretty much commercial quality. It has a nice boozy flavor, but it's not overwhelming thanks to the malt. But in this whole sundae, there's just about a half a shot of bourbon total. And SpongeBob and Pat ate like 10 of these each, so it kind of makes sense. But if you're trying to cut back on calories, you might just want to pour some XXX liquid directly on top. Ooh, that's somehow even more upsetting, kind of like the ending of Raiders of the Lost Ark. And as an ice cream topping, it's just kind of so-so. Anyway, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna run and grab my EpiPen because I think I'm allergic to bananas. Thanks again to the folks at Audible for sponsoring this video. Especially right now, screen fatigue is real, and Audible is a great way to occupy your mind while giving your eyes a much-needed break. Along with a vast library of thousands of titles, Audible Originals are audio exclusives from quite a diverse group. They're also a resource for podcasts, theatrical performances, A-list comedy performances, and much more. Right now I'm listening to Dune because the trailer for the movie just came out, and it looks awesome. Head to audible.com slash babish or text babish to 500-500 to get access access to one free audiobook and a monthly selection of Audible Originals when you try Audible for 30 days.